Welcome back to my channel, everyone. If you're visiting for the first time, my name is Sheridan and I'm a first grade teacher in South Carolina about to begin my fourth year of teaching. That's so exciting. But today's video is gonna be a lot of fun because it is a mini book haul. I've been gathering some different books lately because I've been wanting to kind of revamp my classroom library and include a lot more books that are representative of the students in my class. And I think I've kind of got a couple of good titles that I'm gonna share with you. So if you're interested in seeing what those books are, keep watching. So I have three books that I'm going to be sharing with you today. The first book is called I Love My Hair by Natasha Anastasia Tarfley, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And I'm really, well first, I have been wanting to get my hands on a book kind of like this or a book that deals with the subject of black hair for a long time just because I remember when I was little. I wanted hair that flowed in the wind and that was long that I could just shake and just, you know, have fun with. So I'm really glad that this a book like this exists. And by the way, there are tons of books that deal with loving your hair. Um, but I'm really glad that a book like this exists because it's a celebration of black hair and a celebration of yourself. Um, the story is really good. What it is, is this girl who gets her, whose mom does her hair and just shows her how your hair is wonderful because you can do this with it, you can style it this way, you can do so many different intricate things with your hair. One really cool thing that is important in this book is towards the end of the book, there is an instance where the girl wears her hair a certain way and is teased for it by her classmates. But her teacher really steps in and advocates for her and stands up for her and that made the little girl feel better. And essentially that is our job as teachers to really step in when we see one of our babies in distress like that or to step in when one of our students is not feeling very good about themselves. I know I've had students in the past really just not, um, really not like the way that their their hair was, and I'm talking about my black students. Um, they really didn't like the way that their hair was. I remember an instance, um, I can't remember if it was this past year or the year before, there was this girl, an older student, and wasn't one of my students, but she was really self-conscious about her hair and for that reason she wanted to wear a hood. She did not want to um, show her hair and I just felt it really just tugged at my heart a little bit just because I, I thought her hair looked great. But it's not about what I think, it's about how can we help that student learn to love and accept themselves and love who they are and love their hair. How can we help them to really be proud of who they are and be proud of that as that aspect of themselves. I think this book is a really good way to, I guess, kind of start that conversation among your stu the students in your class. Maybe you could even use this book to start a conversation with your, maybe your grade level team or any of your colleagues, but this book is definitely one that I'm going to use um, in my classroom. So again, this is called I Love My Hair. Okay, the next book I'm about to show you moved me to tears when I first read it and a children's book other than Chrysanthemum has never had this effect on me before. It is called The Day You Begin. And I had never seen this book before until I want to say maybe a month or two ago. Um, but it is by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. And this book um, is about this girl. Um, I guess it could be assumed that maybe it's the, either the beginning of the school year or maybe she's a new student. I was thinking at the beginning of the school year because it does talk about summer plans and what the students did over the summer. Um, but it's about, you know, she walks into school, she um, is, I guess, maybe apprehensive that 
you know there are going to be kids in her class that are not like her and that's pretty much the beginning of the story suppose you walk into the room where there isn't anyone quite like you and it kind of just goes through this list of experiences about students who are do oh who i guess experience a number of things that makes them that makes them different or makes them stand out um from their classmates and it's that's the part that really i guess got me is just because it's hard to be singled out it's very hard to feel like you're the only one who is doing this or the only one that hasn't done this and there's a lot of this in this book but kind of the turnaround in this book is at one point towards the end of the book the there is a boy in the story who finds a commonality with the girl's name saying that her name is kind of like his sister's name and that's kind of how they begin to create a friendship a relationship a bond over that and then after a while friendships get created and you know that's kind of how the book ends just kind of those connections being made and i think that that's a very good lesson to teach our kids um that you know we're not going to be the same we're not the same we might not have the same experiences um but we can come together on some level and respect each other on some level and i think that's a really good lesson to teach our kids it's a really good lesson for us as adults us as teachers if you're not a teacher just being a human being an adult whatever you fall under it's just a good lesson to know that you can respectfully have differences but still come together on so in some way um this book does a really good job of sharing that it's a very touching story i don't i don't i didn't want to read any of the stories to you i really think that it's important for you to have your own experience with the story um this book is really good for probably the beginning of the school year to kind of kind of i guess start to talk about you know let's get to know each other in this way what are some things that you like to do um just like kind of who are you as a person kind of one of those get to know you books i think this book is very suitable for that so this again is called the day you begin the last book i'm going to share with you is very special to me because i fell in love with a character in this book in the first book she was in so if you enjoyed Grace for President, you are going to absolutely love Grace Goes to Washington. Yes, if you are familiar with Grace Goes to Washington or Grace for President, the author is Kelly DiPuccio, hopefully I'm saying that right, and pictures are by Leyun Pham. I really hope I pronounced those names correctly. But if you remember Grace for President, the story is about Grace. She and her class were studying about the presidents um, that have come through the White House and she notices, Grace notices, that there were no females who had been president before. And so I guess that inspired her to want to run for class president and, you know, she runs a campaign, um, holds the whole election and ends up winning the election. I used that book to teach about voting and elections in my class. I even dressed up as Grace. It was so much fun. That was such a fun time in my class. I did that for two years in a row. I didn't dress up the first year that I did it, but I did do it this past year. My kids loved it. And Grace won the class election between Grace, between Grace for President and Duck for President both years. So that was a lot of fun. It was a really fun experience for my kids. But Grace Goes to Washington, I guess, is the sequel or a guess a continuation of the series. I'm really happy that the author came up with another book. In this book, Grace is class president and they take a trip, a field trip to Washington DC and that really inspires Grace and um, inspires her to um, try to start some things in her school. One of the quotes in this book, I will read it because it is a quote actually from Martin Luther King Jr. I have it bookmarked. It is, it says, make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer, a finer world to live in. That's such a great quote because, you know, 
I always regarded Grace in this in the first book and in this book and this book pretty much kind of solidifies that idea for me. I always thought of Grace as just this person who really loved her classmates, loved her school, and really just wanted to make people feel important. And there is an instance in this book where she notices someone who is feeling left out and she brings them in and it's just such a breath of fresh air to see a child really step up in that way. And I don't know about this, I could just be biased, but Grace is so cute. Like, look at her. There is an innocence about Grace that is just so nice and it literally makes you want to read this book. Grace looks like she is having so much fun and her classmates look like they really respect her and um, it looks like she really does set, in a, good, set a good example for them. Um, and just, I love that the book is about a little black girl who is, you know, doing something really good, who is doing something really positive. We really need to show our black students examples of success so that they're not thinking about the narratives that have already been predetermined for them. We need to show them the positives. I think that will be very inspirational for them. I know that things like that was really were really inspirational for me growing up. And even now, as a 26-year-old teacher, I feel very inspired by stories like this. We need to show our students stories like this um, so that they can see the good in, um, so to see the good. So um, again, this is Grace Goes to Washington. I'm very excited to share this book with my students. And I think that this would be a really good book for you to have as well. So Grace Goes to Washington. All right, everyone. The moral of the story, see what I did there? The moral of the story in this video is I really just wanted to share with you guys a few of the books that I've started to collect, to begin, to change up my classroom library. I'm hoping to, I'm not sure if I should do this. I bought books for my classroom library before, but my classroom library was already kind of furnished by books that were donated to me. So I'm not sure if I should maybe buy a second copy of all of those books to put like in my actual classroom library and then like just keep a copy of some of them just for myself. I'm not an expert at classroom libraries, so if you have any ideas of how I should kind of handle that, please leave a comment down below. I'm sure there is someone out there, a teacher or something, who is more well versed in classroom libraries than I am. I am not an expert in classroom libraries in any form or fashion, but I'm hoping that those three books really gave you a good starting point to kind of just begin to have the conversation of anti-racism in your classrooms with your colleagues um, if you're not a teacher and i have something to say about that in a second if you're not a teacher if you're a parent a grandparent a guardian whatever you are you can honestly start this lesson in anti-racism in your own home with your children grandchildren whoever you're responsible for i had a friend who um Facebooked me or commented on a post that I posted on Facebook about not being a teacher but wanting to be able to teach their loved ones, their um, small loved ones, about being anti racist and wanted to have and was wondering about some resources that would be helpful to them. And I said, You do not need to be a teacher. In a lot of cases, you're parent, grandparent, whoever you are, are the first teacher of, of those children and I think it's very important that the learning does start at home and home can look like many different things for many different people but I think that that's awesome that that friend of mine wanted to kind of be the change in that aspect. I was really happy to see that. But I'm hoping that this will inspire some of you guys, whether you're a teacher or not, to think about the kinds of books and resources that you want to use to kind of start teaching your kids about tolerance, accepting people for who they are, and not judging a person by the color of their skin because that is just 
not something we want to do. We need to really just change the narrative and accept all people for who they are, especially our black students, because I really just need for our black students to feel loved and appreciated, seen, heard, respected. That's very important to me. I hope that's important to you as well. But I really hope that you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please click the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I post a new video. I plan to post a new video every Sunday in the morning. And with these, type, with these kind of book hauls, I plan to do a book haul once a month because, you know, I don't want to share too many books because I'm very good at rambling and those videos could be super duper long. So I plan to do a book haul maybe once a month, hopefully for the rest of 2020 and we'll see where it goes from there. But I hope this video really helped you, was a gift to you and that you got something from it. But I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.